Mobile One. So this is a late 90s, early 2000s Toyota Corolla. Great little car, good for fuel economy, lots of good things to say about it. Uh, this one in particular has a problem with the EVAP system. Most all the EVAP system is just right here. There's no guard or anything on it to cover it up, but there's lots of little connections. I've got a video on canisters, how they work. I'll leave a link at the end and I'll leave another link in the description in the show more down below. You click the show more, it expands and you'll find a link down below via YouTube link. The EVAP system is the evaporative emissions control system. If you've ever seen gasoline poured out on something or when you're fueling on a hot day you see all the little wavy lines coming off, those are hydrocarbons and they can contribute to all kinds of different things that pollute the air, including and not limited to uh, global I can't even say it makes me want to throw up if you have a bunch of leaks in the system then not only are you not getting as good fuel economy and you're losing money from your fuel tank because it's evaporating and going off but you have other problems as well in a nutshell what it does is it catches all those fumes stores it the charcoal absorbs it like a sponge then when you start your car up another hose takes it all the way the full length of the car to your intake manifold and they'll suck it in just slurp it up just like a plastic straw sucking up soda in Southern California. So you've got lines that go all the way up here. Now some of these lines are brake lines, some of them are fuel lines, and one, of, one or two of them are going to be your EVAP system. So you've got all these different connections, all these different places to leak, and so it's got its own system to check for pressure and to detect. This one's just an open and closed valve. It's like a door that opens and closes, but there's a valve on top of the fuel tank, which is another place that it can leak. But for all of these different places that you can have a very teeny tiny leak, one of the first things that I like to check is one of the most common to fail, and that would be your fuel cap. It could be the user operator error, or it could be a number of other things, but there's also your filler neck that can leak. So I like to follow that. Most of the time, like right here, it is metal and then it goes to rubber. Rubber can crack, so metal's better than rubber. Rubber can rust, so sometimes plastic's better than that. There's all these different connections. Let's just go over a few of them. This can leak, this can leak, this can leak, this can leak. Uh, these can get cracked somewhere along the way. This can leak, this can leak, this can leak, this can leak. These two little things on this valve can leak, this one here and this one here. The other end of these where they connect to the tank can also leak. The little ring where the fuel sending unit goes into the tank, those are really common to leak if people don't do them right and don't use silicone to lubricate it and get it to set all pretty. So rather than just going nuts, trying to figure out, I mean these systems would never work if we had to visually inspect them only. So that's got its own onboard second generation or OBD2 means of diagnosing itself or checking itself. So we lean on that pretty heavily. But then beyond that, there's just common things to look at. And the easiest one to get to, the most common you can do, is right up there where it's easy to get to. Oftentimes when the check engine light comes on, we find that it's a gas cap. If you Google the code that comes up, P0442, you'll find that it says it's a very difficult thing to diagnose, and it can be or not. On an older car like this, the best thing to do is to check a couple, three things really. You want to check the click rate of the gas cap, make sure it's getting on tight enough. You want to check the rubber seal for any cracks. They wear out just like wiper blades, radiator hoses, and tires. The click rate was fine. I would still recommend replacing this cap. And you also want to check the surface where it mounts onto the filler neck itself. The filler neck can get rusted. Rough surfaces do not seal well. The best way to clean rust off of metal that I know of is to take a wire brush and to just scrub it. You can see where there's been salt water residue from salting the roads in the wintertime. More especially at the bottom here. You can see that there's some rust there. So I take a stainless steel wire brush or a metal wire brush and just clean the surface. I think you'll find that it does a really good job at getting rid of the corrosion. Uh, another thing that you can do is use some silicone, just the dielectric grease type silicone or silicone paste and put that on there. What that does is it helps to lubricate so that there's a reduced amount of friction so you can get a little more snug. But it also kind of forms a barrier 
from water getting onto that surface. I mean, yeah, you could paint it, but how long is that gonna last in the presence of gasoline? Do a slick coat of that, put that on. This is how this repair turned out. It turned out good, and it caused that P0442 not be there anymore. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you wanna see more videos like this, be sure to click like and subscribe, and then ding the little bell. This little bell is magic. What subscribe used to do is what this bell does. It notifies you every time I post a new video. I try to get a new video up every Wednesday and Sunday morning. I do a big long repair video on Sunday and a quick tip video like this on Wednesdays. Bonus footage at the end.